So, you can forgive me? I repeated, looking into Carla's eyes and seeing nothing. Then her face turned red with anger. She pressed her lips together as she replied, You lying bastard! You played two rounds, did you not? Carla stood up and shouted, I warned you what would happen if you were late. I'm going to head to the bar, pick up three strangers, and close up tight as an airlock. Grabbing her purse, she ran out of the garage, slamming the door behind her with such force that the whole house rumbled. I walked over to the bar and poured myself a rum and coke. Taking out my cell phone, I dialed a number. Hello, Bob, have her serviced. There's been a change of plans. Have her served at her lover's apartment in an hour. That will give her time to pack and me time to pack my bags. I was going to serve her after dinner, but this will work in my favor. Don't worry about using anything from tonight or last night. I have enough evidence from the last three months. Besides, I'm going to file an irreconcilable differences report anyway. I only need it to use leverage. All right, I'll catch up with you later. Dialing the numbers on the phone again. George Dan speaking. Okay, I guess. Come on, get in there and change the locks. Thanks. See you in 30. Dan sighed and walked up the stairs to their bedroom. Pulling out two large suitcases, he began putting Carla's personal belongings in them. Going into the bathroom, he gathered her toiletries and then went to the closet and gathered enough clothes to last her until the sheriff escorted her into the house to get the rest of her things. He carried them downstairs and sat them by the front door. About 11 o'clock, I heard a loud knock on the front door. A woman's voice came through the door shouting obscenities at me. I picked up the phone and called the police. I waited until the red and blue lights flashed through the curtains before heading for the front door. There was a knock on the door. As I opened the door, I saw two of the best police officers in the city standing there with Carla. I figured I'd better be very polite to the large man standing in front of me. Can I help you, officer? Mr. O'Shaughnessy, your wife says you locked her out of the house. Yes, sir, I did, but it's not her house, it's mine. Here is the deed, and you see it is in my name. I have just served her with divorce papers and a restraining order to stay at least 100 feet away from me. Familiarizing himself with the papers, the officer hands them back. Do you wish to press charges, Mr. O'Shaughnessy? No, not now, I reply in a muffled voice. If you've ever read her comments on the website under Loving Wives, you can tell she doesn't read the forewords carefully. She just skips over them. And when she writes her comments, she looks like an idiot, no matter what level of author is writing the story. Officer, please tell Mrs. O'Shaughnessy to contact her attorney, and he will contact mine, and I will arrange for a neutral party escort to pick up her belongings. All credit cards are disabled, except for one with a $500 limit. There are two bags of her stuff, wishing her a pleasant evening. I close the door with a sense of inner peace. Next Monday. Knock, knock. I start gesturing for the young engineer to come in and take a seat while I'm on the phone. Look, Bob, I'm willing to make sure Carla gets something, but legally I'm broke and entering Chapter 7. I have practically nothing but a house and I refinanced it so my people will get a nice severance package until I can resume work. Tell her that if she doesn't do it reasonably, I'll send out all the VHS tapes to her family and her fellow employees. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Hi, Sandy, how are you? I smiled. Great, Sandy giggled. I guess from that phone call you just made, you and Carla are getting divorced. Yes, divorcing, I just can't take her antics anymore. I'm just not cut out for it. I want to tell you that Saturday night I confessed my cheating to her in great detail, but she called me a liar, jumped out of the house, and went off to her lovers. Sandy sighed. Everyone here knew she had been cheating on you for the last six months. We didn't say anything because we thought you might be aware of such things. I noticed you had changed about three months ago when I saw you becoming more distracted and sad. It seemed like you just didn't have any energy in you. I want to tell you something else, Dan. I've been in love with you for a long time, even before you started our company. Why do you think I followed you from another company? I always had a strange feeling about Carla. It was the way she acted around other men. Those were little things that only another woman would notice. I wouldn't do anything until you were free if that ever happened. When I saw her and her lovers coming out of my complex, I decided to make my move. 
I was lucky I was playing golf and was waiting for an opportunity to play with you. I asked Tim to let me know when you needed a partner and he arranged a tea time. I let you drink while I drank water. You felt very good. You made it easy for me by showing yourself to be a great golfer and getting ahead of me. I put my plan into action by removing your panties, after which you became mine. Dan replied in shock. Carla told me I didn't understand anything. I guess I was prey, and that makes you a sexual predator. Sandy smiled, nodding her head affirmatively. Yes, but I turned you down and was going back to the house. Well, Dan, you know how well that works out. When I got to the car, I got the idea that my car wouldn't start. Lucky for me, you didn't try to start it. When you needed to go to the bathroom, I realized that at that point I was going to have sex, even if I had to tie you to this bed. I wish you would do that sometimes, Dan laughed. I know some people think you're just as guilty of cheating as Carla, but your marriage was over a long time ago. I just wanted to push you to do it. I realize now that you must have found out about it and were already waiting to pull the trigger. Jesus, Dan replies. I don't understand anything. At that moment, the door swings open and Carla bursts into the room. You son of a bitch, my layer told me we're broke and our company is insolvent. Dan stood up, being six inches taller than his 5'9 wife. He presented a rather intimidating figure. Sit down, Carla, if you want to talk, or I can call the police and send your ass to jail. Carla looked to her right and saw Sandy rise from her chair and turn to face her. Carla screamed, Dan, you asshole, is that the slut you were hanging out with this weekend? Sandy took a step toward Carla and replied, You stupid cow. If you weren't hanging and fighting off half the men in town, you'd still have him. Believe me, he had no idea what I was doing. I just wanted me to be his first choice after he divorced your cheating girlfriend. Come on, old Hereford. I'll pull your lips over your head and let you fuck me. And don't get me started on size here. I've had bigger and smaller ones, and I'm here to tell you that he knows how to use the one he has quite effectively. The man knows how to have fun. Let me ask you this. Have your boyfriends cuddled in threesomes with you after you've slept or made love? Dan cuddled with me. For God's sake, both of you sit down and shut up, Dan demanded sternly. Carla sat down and assumed a submissive pose in the chair across from him. She sighed. I'm sorry for what I did. I don't understand what happened to my brain that allowed me to ignore all the consequences of my actions. I just... Stop thinking, Dan. You're good looking, very smart, funny. I just forgot. For that matter, Friday was my last time. I stopped taking the pill after that. I really wanted your kids. They would have the best DNA a woman could want from a man. Please be fair and I'll go away. I can even understand that a one-time mistake might be forgivable, but I know I went too far. And I'm sorry I hurt you. The only thing I want to know is how you knew that I recently got tested and I don't have an STD. Did someone tell you? Before answering, I leaned back in my chair and smiled. No, no one told me. I discovered it one day when I went to shift my golf bag. Since I know you don't golf, I figured someone else had been in the house. You see, my dear, one of your lovers had switched between seven and five clubs. I hired a private detective that day. When I discovered you were having an affair, I pulled back and started playing golf to make my plan. I know hell is going to rain down on me from the loving wives section of the website, but if you sign the papers and let me go, I'll take care of you. You've worked hard for the last four years helping me start a company. Maybe I'll get a chance to start another one. If that happens, I'll give you a 5% non-voting stake in the company. Well, Carla sighed. I'll take your word for it. I can thank your father for that. Oh, shit. I just realized that everything you told me about her today was true. Dan only nodded his head. Excuse me. Your name is Sandy, right? I've seen you at company outings. Yes, Sandy replies. Please take care of him. He deserves it. Get out of here. I'll be back. Carla cries. I'll go. I'll sign the papers today. Dan exhales deeply, letting out a sigh of relief. There is another knock on the door. Come in, Dan calls out. What can I do for you? Are you Mr. O'Shaughnessy? Yes, I answered. The man said, you have been served. Sign here, please. What the hell is this? Taking a letter opener, 
I opened the envelope, pulled out a glossy 8x10 snapshot and a VHS videotape. What the hell is this, and are you suing me, Sandy? Yes, I am, Sandy smiled. Sandy, I'm broke. I spent all the money I had paying all you guys severance pay to keep the money away from Carla. What do you need, Sandy? I know about your new turbofan design that will make jet engines 20% more fuel efficient. It's going to cost millions. And how much is it going to cost me? He stared at Sandy. Not money, but sex. Dan couldn't believe what he had just heard. Let me get this right. You're going to blackmail me with sex. For how long and how often? Sandy began to giggle. I think at least two or three times a day to start with. Maybe five to ten times on the weekends, starting right now. I consulted a lawyer, and under the new sexual harassment law that Bill Clinton just passed and signed, not only can I sue you, but you can go to jail. You have a choice. You can either be my bitch or Bubba's bitch. Which do you prefer? Dan with the biggest grin on his face. What else do you want, if you don't want money? That's okay, I'm not asking for money. You said you'd give each of us a 5% stake in your new company. How long will this blackmail last, Sandy? I grinned. Oh, honey, I'm guessing about 40, 50 years at least. No money? I think I'll get everything I need from you when I have five or six kids. Other than that, what have you got to lose, Dan? I love golf, you love golf. I love sex, you love sex. We're perfect for each other. I laughed with the biggest smile. When is this blackmail going to start? Sandy moved around the table and pushed my chair back far enough to get between me and the table. She pulled her pencil skirt up to her heels. She was wearing thigh-length panties and a garter belt. No panties, I muttered. She sat on the edge of the table with her feet on the arm of my chair. Sandy leaned back demandingly. Now, bitch, come here and entertain me until I pass out. I saw no choice but to comply. 30 minutes later. I collapsed back into his chair, sweat pouring off me. Sandy plopped into my lap, wrapping her arms around my neck and trying to catch her breath. Sandy smiled. Honey, it's going to be great. But I was wondering, you didn't get enough revenge on Carla. What about the guys she slept with? Are you going to let them go free? His face tensed. He blushed and dropped Sandy from his lap. He threw the phone across the room, smashing it against the wall. Then he flipped the desk over with a scream and hurled the chair through the glass window into his office. No, goddammit, they're not leaving, he growled in a choked voice. I'm going to bring hell down on those bastards and there will be no mercy for them. It's one thing to sleep with your wife, but it's another to have sex with men's golf clubs. Epilogue. A year later, Dan and Sandy were married. Another year later, she gave birth to triplets. A golf foursome was created for Dan. Not stopping there, Sandy gave birth to a baby girl two years later and twins 18 months later. Dan told everyone that he had to keep her pregnancy to cut down on the sexual blackmail and give him some rest. His lawyer later informed him that the statute of limitations would expire in 10 years. He ordered his lawyer to never tell her about it. One other note. When I lived in Atlanta many years ago, there was a fundraising event every year at a secluded golf course. For $5,000 a head, you could sign up to play and get a stripper from a very famous strip club. There are six players in each group. They would pull the pin for you and stand at the hole. And then they'd let you hit the ball out. I never participated in this event, but I was told that the tips from most of the girls exceeded the entry fee.